started with this one, with Moderna under pressure after adverse patent ruling and Arbutus soars. So a lot of people asking about Arbutus as well. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this one. Moderna is down, albeit on average volume, in apparent response to a decision from the USPTO's patent trial and appeal board denying the company's motion for an inter-part review of a patent held by Arbutus Biopharma due to its failure to present sufficient evidence that the patent is unpatentable. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen... The 069 patent covers lipid formulations for nucleic acid delivery. Update. In a statement, Moderna believes the PTAB erred in its decision considering that it previously invalidated the claims of U.S. patent number 9,404,127 and some of the claims of U.S. patent number 9,364,000. 435, adding that it may further pursue these matters, it is unaware if any significant intellectual property impediments for any product it plans to commercialize, including COVID-19 vaccine candidate mRNA-1273. And let's see what the heck happened to Moderna, and then we will take a look at ABUS. mRNA is the symbol... Man, that Bitcoin starting to do some good movements, huh? Bruh. Let's see over here. So Moderna going back down as we wanted to see, ladies and gentlemen, keeping track of the price and finally going to the downside. So continuing now with the trend. And what we want to see still, guys, is the same thing. A break of a trend line. No confirmation right now. The only thing that we had was this trend line break over here and it didn't break our resistance. So that is why we got to be patient with our trade, guys, because when we got good confirmations, that's how we can actually acquire a good opportunity. But now looking at Moderna, a 75.38, if this will impact them in the next steps, makes sense that it will go down. But guys... I mean, that's why you got to follow your trading plan, taking profit out of the table, you know, and not only that, putting some stop losses in profit for some positions. So joke, you can be agile with your trade, you know, some people like to put 50 shares, 100 shares, 1000 shares. I don't know. They make the good profit, take out some of the table, maybe half of it. Get out the investment that you had and let the other ride. Think about it. Maybe readjust the trading plan so it can be in your favor, guys. Very, very important for those who want to do some. Hadouken! Let's continue over here with ABUS, Arbutus Biopharma. Let's dig a little bit over here, guys. Let me review once again the chat room. Eme Torres, welcome back. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you once again. Boom shakalaka. Don't worry, don't worry. We will review Tesla and see what happened. Yes, earnings, guys. We said the earnings is something that you got to be patient, you know, because earnings happen and then it just starts to recover, like, We're going to talk about Microsoft because Microsoft, you know, Microsoft, it went down. But now they're talking about the new console. So that's interesting, you know, the timing of things. The same for AT&T, which this morning, it started to look good, but pre-market. But then after, when the market started, it wasn't on the resistance that it broke. We're going to review that as well. But don't worry. You know... Patience is the name of the game. Anyways, ABUS, our Bluetooth Biopharma Corporation. Let's take a look over here. What the heck are they? 
Arbutus Biopharma Corporation, a biopharmaceutical company, engages in the discovery, development, and commercialization of a cure for patients suffering from chronic hepatitis B virus infection in the United States. Its HBV product pipeline consists of AB836, a capsid inhibitor that has the potential to inhibit HBV replication by preventing the assembly of functional viral capsids, and AB423, which is in preclinical studies. The company also develops RNAi drugs, which utilize the RNA interference pathway, allows for a novel approach to treating disease. The RNAi HBV candidates are designed to reduce hepatitis B, Surface antigen expression in patients chronically infected with HBV. In addition, it develops AB729, a second-generation RNAi therapeutic targeted to hepatocytes, HBV, RNA, destabilizer, and orally active agent that cause the destabilization of HBV RNAs, which leads to RNA degradation and to reduction in HBSAG levels. Further, the company engages conducting a phase 1A, 1B clinical trial and several preclinical and investigational new drug enabling studies to evaluate proprietary HBV therapeutic agents. Together with standard of care therapies and in combination with each other, he has strategic alliance, licensing and research collaboration agreements and Mark Kibo, Gridstone Oncology and Aquitas Therapeutics. And the company was formerly known as Tecmira Pharmaceuticals Corporation and changed its name to Arbutus Biopharma Corporation in July 2015. And it is headquartered in Pennsylvania. Let's see, where is ABUS? Arbutus Biopharma. Woo, man. Look at this. Nobody knew about it until today look at that my friends let's look at the monthly over here let's do a quick review of the charts support and resistance guys the basics of trading you already know all of this we just capitalize on the opportunities that the market gives us it's not that we're chasing the trade guys we can't do that you know you just gotta wait patiently if you haven't seen my Instagram page, go ahead and check it out, D-E-I-V-E-D. -E -E I always post things about technicals. And, guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Look at this. Trend line broken on the monthly, looking very, very good. Oh, my goodness, look at that. What an opportunity. But now it actually was doing great structure. Not only that, it broke over here. So that's good. And let me look at my EMAs real quick and see what we got. We're above the 200. It's looking very good. The daily, super bullish. If anything, I would like to see some retracement, but right now it's all bullish. The daily is bullish. Maybe by tomorrow we will end bullish. And the monthly, oh my goodness, dude, we got... How many days? Seven more days. If this closes bullish, man, this can actually continue to $12. And that could be an opportunity. But at the same time, guys, I will say wait for any retracement. Don't go in just yet. The only way that I could trade this is if this retraces and it breaks a trend line and gives me a confirmation wherever it wants to. Or by having a buy stop over here to continue with the trade with the momentum but you will gotta be sure that for when you do this buy stop you gotta take care of the trade more you, you gotta be a little bit more uh paying attention to the trade otherwise for those who were patient and got in over here at three dollars two dollars have a little bit of flexibility to manage their trades so very important to follow your trading plan and guys here you go. Good, good, good to see you, Randy. Are you are you doing okay? Oh yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Randy always has such a good energy, man. 
Let's go ahead and continue with Novavax Inc.'s manufacturing deal for COVID-19 vaccine. What? Novavax enters into an agreement with CDMO, Fujifilm, Diosynth Biotechnologies for the manufacture of bulk drug substance for MVX COVID-2373, its COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Production of the first batch is underway at Fujifilm's Morrisville uh, NC site, which is earmarked for a 30K subject phase 3 clinical trial expected to launch in the fall. Manufacturing costs will be funded under the $1.6 billion award from the U.S. government's Operation Warp Speed Initiative. Results from a phase 1 trial in 130 healthy volunteers will be released during the first week of August. The phase 2 portion will begin shortly thereafter. And shares are down 2% after hours. Let's see what the heck we got over here with MBAX Novavax. And Novavax on the daily created another retest at 150 today and retraced back down. I see this consolidation right now, guys. If anything, if this goes down to 99, that could be a great opportunity. Or even 99. Yeah, 99 makes sense. 111. That will be good. As you can see, we are consolidating. Two ways to trade it as well, guys. This can actually go a little bit lower. If it does, that could be a great potential opportunity. The same over here at 150s. I think it's too high right now. We've been riding it. Man, this trade since $15, guys. I remember when we were talking about it. So, see, this is the biggest difference about trading intraday. And the other is, well, managing the trade correctly and making it, giving a little bit of room for the trade to breathe, you know. So, let it do its thing. Novavax inking a deal. That's a good move forward. So let's see, where can it go? Let me see the weekly first, and let me remove everything here. So we are very close to getting to that 169. The best way to see that, oh my goodness, tomorrow's candle, dude, so important. Tomorrow's candle, very, very important. Look at this, it's still bearish, but it can become bullish. Who the heck knows? Let me know in the chat room or in the comment section <laughs> let's continue with the bio sector guys we got interesting news today huh <laughs> and then sorrento picks up another bear who doubts covid19 cure what lakewood capital has established a short position in sorrento therapeutics joining a growing list citing its checkered history and opportunistic claims to have a cure for COVID-19. Shares quadrupled in mid-May mid after the company announced that it discovered an antibody dubbed STI-1499 that it claimed that could provide 100% inhibition of SARS-CoV-2. Shares peaked at $10 the next day but retraced to a low of $382 on June 4th before starting a new uptrend. Observers including STAT's Adam Furstein, Vital Knowledge, and Hindenburg Research were quick to question the veracity, veracity of the company's claim. So let's see where Soar Ento, which has been quite a ride. I remember that day. And they were like, they found the cure, and no, uh, they were just making headlines. Look at that. Downside, we broke this trend line, and now we're going to see if we're going to retest this one over here, and it makes sense to me to see at $7.22 retest if he wants to continue with the upside. Otherwise, let it do its thing. This was what an interesting trade. We actually got in over here at, is that I had some original positions over here when it started to go up at 246, but that was the creation of a, new trend if you look at the weekly you can see here that it created a new trend so the best thing for this to continue with the upside will be to continue with this trend line over here 
Let me fix this over here. So you can see the W for the win and everything that we talked about. The reason that I entered, guys, because of this break, going to the upside, getting some profit, and now riding the other positions. It may take me out. Who knows? We'll wait and see. Let me go ahead and take a look over here at the chat room. Good evening. Stocks for life. Boom, shakalaka. Welcome back, my friend. Good to see you. Hopefully you are doing good. What about Gennaro Di Carlo? Good evening, my friend. Good to see you as well, my friend. Boom, shakalaka. No masters here, my friend. All of you are the masters and a lot of kings and queens and shoeys and shoeettes in this beautiful community. Let's go ahead, my friends. Boom, shakalaka. And continue with the news. I think it just makes sense. We are looking at some retracement, right? Yeah. I mean, Baxar, dude. This was an intense trade, dude. Guys, our entry were at 35 cents. We've been riding this for quite a while. And you know what? Baxar can actually give us another opportunity, but we don't know when. We're just waiting when. <laughs> so let's see what we got. Let's see with, with the information we have available, right? That's how we do the analysis. With the information we have available, it seems like Baxar still can go a little bit downside to the downside, but I like this rejection. This rejection on the four hour, starting to look interesting. The daily is bearish, but with good rejection. The weekly, still bearish. So tomorrow's candle will be important. If it closes engulfing, bearish engulfing, then down, down, down. And the monthly, seven more days, is still bullish. We actually reach this resistance level over here. The next one will be 21. Either way, I will be waiting for the next move. And if we are following, for example, let's go ahead and review this. Okay, I got I got this. Uh, there you go. I want to delete that. So if we're following our structure, you can see that we're still on a trend. It makes sense to revisit that $13. Even though we had that huge upside we created a support level guys and the support level actually went lower over here from down to the upside higher highs to create a higher low and then to create a higher high so it's starting to move pretty intensely and now what are we waiting for ladies and gentlemen that higher low yes this higher low will be what we're waiting for if it goes here or even a little bit lower, that will be awesome because we can capitalize on that opportunity. So hopefully, guys, patience is the name of the game. We can't enter when the momentum is going. And if Baxter actually goes to $6, that could be another potential re-entry. From our original of $0.35, cents, that's insane, man, insane. Anyways, hopefully that's helpful, my friend. For tomorrow, well, tomorrow we don't know. Let's see. That weekly candle, very important, still bearish. The daily, the daily is rejecting the one hour. Whoosh, man, so close. Look at that, so close. This can actually become something real. I don't know. That break of a trend line can give us confirmations. Right now, there's no confirmation. Let's see um, what else. X is double bottom. Let's see. Welcome to the channel, Chris. What the heck? You're like coming through here, not saying anything. Boom, shakalaka. Like, oh. Let's see what we got with X. United States Steel, Steel Corp. Mm. Wow, let's see. I haven't looked at this one for quite Johnson and Johnson. Man, the weekly is holding pretty, pretty strongly. Look, it's bearish, but it's not engulfing, and the previous candle was bullish. I'm actually expecting possible movement higher tomorrow, man. Who knows? Maybe not higher. Maybe, you know what? 
maybe starts the day with a retracement. Oh, no, he's down. And then who the heck knows? Johnson and Johnson making a deal with Baxart or anything like that, you know? Or BioNTech. No, no, no. Johnson and Johnson was working with... Was it Moderna? I don't remember right now, but I know that they were working together. And there's some great potential here for Johnson and Johnson. I think that if it goes down, that's another opportunity, my friend. You know that the bio sector right now is hot, hot, hot. As you know, everybody trying to find the cure for the coronavirus, trying to get the manufacturing, trying to get everything out. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. Chewy, did he say hello? <laughs> Why didn't you say me? S tell me anything, this guy. Randy, are you still here with us? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Randy. X pays 